Hello and welcome back to this series of lectures on synaptic transmission. In this video, we will talk about integration of inputs. Okay, we're going to be uh, addressing these two questions here. One, how do PSPs travel to and sum at the trigger zone? And secondly, what are the consequences of that for initiating an action potential? Okay, so just to get started, um, I want to remind you, we went over the steps of synaptic transmission. We went over what happens at the postsynaptic cell after it receives um, that neurotransmitter signal from the presynaptic cell. But what I want to emphasize or point out to you is that so far, we've only looked at what happens at a single synapse in isolation, right? So we've looked at what happens when we get that action potential coming in from the one presynaptic cell and how it passes that signal along to the postsynaptic cell. However, in reality, um, that rarely happens. You rarely just have one presynaptic cell passing a signal to one postsynaptic cell. Okay, the reality is much, much more complicated as you can see in this diagram. So what you're looking at here is uh, you can't even really see it, but in purple is the cell body of a postsynaptic cell, okay? And all of these little blue structures are axon terminals of presynaptic cells giving input to this one postsynaptic cell, okay? On the right here, you see the dendrites of a cell, um, which, you know, it, is, it can act as a postsynaptic cell, Okay, um, and as you can see, there are many, many locations on these dendrites where this cell could be receiving inputs. Okay, so my point here is that in reality, we have these networks of neurons. In reality, a neuron is going to be receiving input from tens, hundreds, thousands of other neurons, um, and it's going to be generating PSPs in response to all of those inputs, it's going to have to figure out what to do with all of that information, right? And there's only one place, the trigger zone, where the decision is made about whether to, uh, to trigger an action potential or not. So how does the cell do that? What does it do with all those inputs? That is what we are going to talk about here. Okay, um, well, this is basically the, the answer. Synapses are going to combine inputs through these two mechanisms called spatial summation and temporal summation. So let's talk about those. Okay, so um, first mechanism, spatial summation. Uh, spatial summation is what happens when we have simultaneous PSPs from different locations on a neuron summing at the trigger zone. Okay, so let's break that down or let's take a look at this example. Okay, so we have an example here. This postsynaptic neuron is receiving inputs from these three presynaptic neurons. Okay, and the PSP that's generated at each of these axon terminals, well, at the postsynaptic across the synapse from those axons, axon terminals, each of those PSPs alone would not be enough to trigger an action potential at the trigger zone, right? So if you looked at one action potential from this presynaptic cell, you would get a PSP, that PSP would be subthreshold, and you wouldn't get an action potential. Same thing would be true of this neuron and of this neuron right here, okay? But imagine what happens if you have action potentials coming in from all three of these neurons at the exact same time, what is going to happen when we have those three sub-threshold EPSPs summing at the trigger zone? Take a moment to think about that, write down your answer, and we will come back to it. Okay, so hopefully you figured out that 
even though these three EPSPs are each individually subthreshold, if you combine them together at the trigger zone, you could get them to sum to form a larger depolarization that would be big enough to bring the trigger zone past threshold, and it would be enough then to trigger an action potential, okay? So that is the uh, phenomenon of spatial summation. We're, we're summing PSPs from multiple inputs at the same time at the trigger zone, okay? Now let's take a look at what happens if one of those PSPs is inhibitory, okay? So in this example, what we have going on is we have two excitatory neurons, two neurons that are generating EPSPs in the postsynaptic neuron, okay? EPSP here, EPSP here. If we were just to look at these two neurons, if, the, if we summed the EPSPs from these two neurons, those two EPSPs would be able to combine and bring this cell to threshold. Got that? Okay, so, but imagine what happens if you add an IPSP to the mix there, right? So you have these two EPSPs that together are enough to bring the cell to threshold, but you add an IPSP to that, those three PSPs are going to add together at the trigger zone, what is going to happen now? That is your question up here. Take a moment to think about that. Take a moment to answer it. Okay, so in this case, what happens is when we add the IPSP to these two EPSPs, that brings down the membrane potential and it brings it down low enough that we are now sub-threshold, okay? So normally these two together would be supra-threshold, but we add an inhibitory PSP to that, that's gonna bring it down, and that's not gonna be enough to get you to threshold, and we're not gonna get an action potential, okay? One more thing that I wanna mention is that the positioning of the presynaptic neurons is very important, right? So remember that these PSPs, they're being generated right where the presynaptic axon meets up with a postsynaptic cell. Um, if that location is closer to the trigger zone, then you're gonna get less degradation of that signal by the time it gets to the trigger zone. Therefore, inputs that come in closer to the trigger zone are gonna have a bigger impact on what happens in the trigger zone, right? So if you have a big PSP up here, it's gonna degrade, it's gonna be small by the time it reaches the trigger zone. However, if you have a big PSP being generated right here, right next to the trigger zone, it's only gonna be a little bit smaller by the time it gets to the trigger zone. Therefore, it's going to have um, a big influence on that decision about whether to generate an action potential or not. 